Hey, my friends, I just wanted to jump on live with you this morning to talk about love and love and meditation because they are two sides of the same coin. The path of love can lead you to meditation. The path of meditation can lead you to love. So what do they have in common, love and meditation? They both only exist in the present moment. Meditation is being in the present moment. And love exists only in the present moment. It is a feeling state. And feelings are in the present moment. And so whether you choose the path of love or the path of meditation, they are, in fact, inextricably intertwined. When you follow the path of meditation, you become more loving. And when you follow the path of love, you become more meditative. So it's a double benefit. And love is such a such an important factor in our lives. It is the very foundation of our lives. It gives our, li our lives meaning and purpose because we have love in it. And it's love that always helps us carry on when things are difficult or tragic events occur. It's love that helps us get through it and continue on. So love is the, is the very essence of our lives. And in fact, hi, Helen, welcome. Love is the foundation of our lives. And love is, in fact, who we are. We are love. We are all expressions of love. Now, you might not sometimes feel like that, and sometimes some people's behavior might not indicate that. But on the soul level, that is so. That we are all essentially love. So what happens? What happens if we are not experiencing that very often? What happens is that the mind can come in and tell you things like you're not worthy of love or you don't deserve love or who are you to think that you deserve to have a lot of love in your life. Because the mind is full of conditionings from the past. And what has happened is you have been filled with wrong conditionings because everybody is worthy of love. Every single person on this planet. And compassion is the highest form of love. Compassion loves and expects nothing in return. Because compassion knows that every person is worthy of love, whatever their circumstances, whatever their situation. Love, however, wants 
the love reciprocated because love is a circle. Love is a circle. So when we receive love, you love that person back. The giving and receiving of love, it creates a circle and that creates the foundation of any relationship. Friends, family, partners, spouses, the circle of love, the circle of giving and receiving of love. Love doesn't give and expect nothing in return. That is what compassion does. The highest form of love. So with love, what you want to be looking at is, is your ability to give and receive love balanced? Because some people, they overgive. And then they get depleted. And when you get depleted, you get resentful. On the other hand, some people over receive. Or another way of saying that is they are a drain or a suck on other people. And all they do is take. They are takers. And they don't know how to give. So wherever you are on this continuum, something to bring awareness to with non-judgment and compassion for yourself. This is not about beating yourself up. To, oh, well, I'm this and I'm not a good person. No, no. Non-judgment, acceptance of what is, and compassion for yourself always have to be there. And then just have a look from a place of inquiry. Do I overgive? Or am I more of a taker? Or do you feel you have those two fairly in balance, the giving and receiving? Because, you know, it changes. You might have a day when you're giving more. And if you do have such a day, then you have to make sure that you receive. And this is where the meditation comes in. Because when you are connected to your meditation practice, whatever your practice is, then you're in a state of receiving. Whether you do a simple sitting meditation, that is a state of receiving. Whether, for example, you like to go for walks in nature, and that is your meditation, then receive. Because nature has so much to give us, so much joy, so much love. Receive. Receive, receive. So this is something you bring aware, awareness to for yourself, to see where you can bring yourself into balance with love because the most important person that you love is yourself. You have to put yourself first. And many of you have been conditioned that it's selfish and greedy to put yourself first. But look, unless you fill up your own well first, you have nothing to give. And then you're running on empty. And then the resentment starts. And then basically what you're giving out is resentment, not love. So fill yourself up first and then give from your overflow. Don't give from your well. Give from your overflow, because then you won't get depleted. And make sure you keep filling up your well on a regular basis. This is how you keep yourself in an optimum state of balance. And it's easy to do that with a meditation practice. People sometimes say to me, oh, what does self-love mean? I don't know how to love myself. Okay, well... Hi, Sherry. Welcome. Hugs back to you, too. Um, 
so okay i don't know how to love myself so i would suggest then that you start a meditation practice because that is loving yourself and that's learning about receiving filling up your well connecting to presence to connecting to the inexhaustible well of love that resides within you there's always more love from within you see the problem is we have been taught we have to go out and get love from somebody else that's what we're all taught i was certainly taught that you have to go and find out find the perfect man or the perfect woman and then you will be complete uh you know but you have to get the love from somebody else or from your parents we were taught so if we happen to have parents who are not very loving then we think we are unlovable but yet we are not unlovable we are all deeply lovable And here, the good news is, the very best news is, you can always get love from within yourself, from your own heart. And with a daily meditation practice, you, you can practice that every day, just sitting silently, being with yourself. That is love. That is loving yourself. That brings awareness to yourself, brings awareness to your body, to your heart, to your soul, and you fill yourself up with love. So then what happens is you are less needy of finding love from others. Because if you're running on empty and then you're going out looking for love somewhere else and you're coming from a needy place, you're coming from a place of lack of depletion. And then, you know, that's not a good recipe for finding somebody because law of attraction matches us up. And so you'll find another needy person who's also coming from lack and depletion. And that's not a great, good start for a relationship. But when you learn to fill yourself up from the inside so that you have an overflow of love, then you're coming from a place of abundance, abundance of love. And then you will attract people who are also coming from a place of abundance in love. And this is how we create more love, not just for ourselves, but for everybody we come in contact with for the whole planet. And the world needs more love. I think we all know that. The question is, where do you start? Well, you have to start with yourself. You can't go out and fill the world up with love, <laughs> heal everybody. But you can start with yourself. Fill yourself up with love from within. And then you will naturally and automatically be sharing it with others because you will just transmit love. And how cool is that? So that then others also benefit when you fill yourself up first. And, and remember too that love is the most healing energy on the planet. It's the most powerful healing energy there is. So you're not only healing yourself. By transmitting love, you're helping to heal others too. Those who can receive it, of course. And so it's a win-win. 
And never mind what the mind says. The mind might come up with all kinds of criticisms and objections like, oh, you're being selfish, focusing on yourself. Well, yes, you are being selfish, but you have to be. You have to focus on yourself first and fill up that well. And then the benefits are incredible. And when you come to an, the end of a relationship, which can be hard, but always thank the other person. Thank them for the time you've had together, even if you're mad at them. Yeah, thank them. Come from gratitude. Gratitude is a dimension of love. Because then, as you continue on your life, you are coming from a place of love and gratitude in your life and you will easily attract more loving people to you. And you will hold that other person in your memory in a place of love. Which is the most beneficial for you. Now, if you have anger, which you might well do, especially, you know, if your former partner or spouse had an affair or hurt you deeply in some way, then you have to heal the pain, your pain and you have to heal the anger. That's your responsibility to heal your own pain and heal your own anger. And that you can do this many ways to do that, but I certainly have many suggestions for you. So if you need help with that, healing anger or pain, write me a note in the comments below because there are a lot of meditations that help with expressing our anger and with healing pain. And they work so that you can come back to your place of center of Hey, Caroline from France. Bienvenue. That's a little French that I speak. Welcome. So just bring your awareness to your state of love. Whether you're more of a giver or more of a taker. And how meditation can help you with that. Meditation is awareness. And remember that love and meditation are two sides of the same coin. They are inextricably intertwined. The path of love leading you to meditation, the path of meditation leading you to love. And it's love that enhances your life that feeds and nourishes your heart and your soul and your body. Because the more you love your body, the healthier your body will be. And that is a very good thing. So this is helpful, not just for you personally, but you have to think of the ripple effect this will have when you bring so much love to yourself and recognize that you are the sort, have a source of love within you. You don't have to be all needy trying to get people to love you. You love yourself. You fill up from that well of love within you. And then you attract people. Love is about attraction. And always understanding that love is in the present moment. And the problem sometimes people run into in relationships is they make promises to each other. Oh, I'll love you forever. Now that sounds wonderful. And I'm sure they mean it at the time. But you simply cannot guarantee that you will love someone forever. It's not possible. Because love comes 
often unexpectedly, but it can also leave. And then you find you're not in love with that person anymore. Or you fell in love with somebody else, not on purpose, not because you were seeking to do that, but it just happened. Because we can't control love. It's like the wind. Yeah, we can't control the wind. One day it's like really windy, another day it's not really windy at all. We don't have control over, over these things. It's really have to be aware of that, that love exists in the present moment. I mean every word you say in the present moment and also understand that you cannot control love for the rest of your life of going forward into the future. And the more you understand that, then the easier it is for you to let go of a person if it comes time for that. You can let go of them with love and gratitude rather than anger or resentment because they promised to love you or they signed a piece of paper that they were going to love you and now they're telling you they've fallen in love with somebody else or the, or the love just isn't there anymore because love also changes shape. So be aware about what love is and be grateful when it's there with another person because you can't force it to stay forever sometimes love does stay forever so for some people for the rest of their lives yes it does but for a lot of people it doesn't then we have to gracefully let it go and let that person go with love and gratitude and keep ourselves in a state of love All right, my friends, I hope this has been helpful for you today to spend some time bringing your awareness to love and how you love, how you give love, how you receive love, and understand that love and meditation are two sides of the same coin. So I love you all. Thank you so much for being with me live and also thank you to all of you who watch the replay. Please write replay in the comments so I know you are here and let me know your thoughts. I love to hear from you. Give me a yes if you agree with what I'm saying. Let me know and I will talk to you again soon.